Hey everyone, so we're going to move on to the second law. We just finished talking about the first law, which is all about the law of inertia and the law of um, equilibrium and, and FBDs and all that stuff. Uh, remember, the first law talked about why objects move and said that objects will only move if and only if they're exerted by an unbalanced force. If they're not moving, then they'll start moving. If they were moving, they'll change either the direction or their speed or something uh, based off of this unbalanced force. The second law goes into a little bit more of calculations. Um, this one actually talks about how they move, and in particular, the relationship between force and the acceleration. Now, we've already said that the greater their inertia, the greater the force needed to uh, keep them to move. Um, we also could uh, recognize that the more force, the more that motion is going to change. If I have an object that's uh, sitting at the table, I exert a little bit of force, I expect the change in motion to be a very little one. But if I exert a larger force, I expect that change of motion to be even larger. This is going to actually put it into a more quantitative uh, statement. Basically, it says that the relationship between the net force, the mass, and the acceleration are given by the following equation, F net equals ma. This, this is the corner store stone equation. This is your main equation for this topic. Just like how the magic D was that you know first stop equation, this is ours. F net equals ma. Remember, F net is your net force. That's the force that you get when you add when you add up all the forces on the object. M is the mass, and A is the acceleration. Now, um, one thing I recommend if you're filling out your note packet, you should see a bunch of spots that say this F net, uh, M, and A. If you want, you can write in that, that this is the net force, this is the mass, this is the acceleration. But honestly, you have that on the reference table, so there's not really that much of a point. What I'd rather you do is write down their units. Force, F net, is represented by newtons. M is mass. That's represented by kilograms. And A is acceleration, which is meters per second squared. Now, I want to point out one thing about this. Any force is measured in newtons. So F net is a type of force. It's the sum of all the forces. Fg is your gravitational force, also in newtons. Fn, Ft, Ff. See a pattern? Fk, Fa, Fs. These are all forces. These are all forces that are measured in newtons. If it's a force, it is newtons. It doesn't matter what type of force, it's measured in newtons. Um, now, for the most part, using this equation, it's going to be uh, pretty much plug and chuck. The important thing is just being able to find the net force a lot of times, but even then, that's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, now, there's a, a very specific uh, equation that we can actually find based off of this. Now if we consider an object that is falling freely in the air, right? an object that is falling is experiencing an acceleration equal to 9.8. And remember this is a constant term which we actually represent with this letter G for gravity, or the acceleration of gravity I should say. So if I look at this, this equation the only force acting on this is Fg. So because the net force has to be equal to mass times the object's acceleration, I can rework this to write this equation. Fg equals mg. Once again, this is another major equation. You're using these two equations for a majority of the time. In fact, there's only one other equation that we're going to talk about in this unit. Again, another three equations, but F net equals MA and FG equals MG are going to be not only the biggest equations in this topic, but the big equations in every topic from now on. So you want to make sure that you remember these. Again, FG, M, and G 
stands for the force due to gravity, or also called the weight of the object, measured in newtons. M is the mass, measured in kilograms. And G is the acceleration due to gravity, or the gravitational field strength. It's either 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth, or you might see the unit uh, more often looking like newtons per kilogram. But it's the same thing. So here's the first question. Pause video, work in itself, and we'll go over in a second. All right. So once again, you know, based off of this, they want the net force. You know, you can get into the habit of doing this again. F net, M and A. We have a mass of 100 kilograms. We have an acceleration of 23 meters per second squared. We're looking for the net force. So F net equals MA. This is equal to 100 times 23. So my final answer is going to be 2300 newtons. Now, here's actually something I want to mention. Uh, I didn't have to make the comment before, but now that we're going to start using uh, equations with derived units, um, it, it's important to note this. If, for some reason, you forget the unit for force, despite the fact that it's pretty much said all throughout a test or an assignment, you can actually get away with doing this. So this is 100 kilograms. This is 23 meters per second squared. You're multiplying these two numbers. So that means you're multiplying these units. You can get full credit for units by writing it as kilograms times meters per second squared. So whatever you're doing to the numbers, do that to the units and you get full credit. It is a nice and easy way to save yourself. I've had many people save tons of points on units on tests and on quarterlies by using this trick. Of course, you want you'd be better off remembering the units because again they they come up so much but it's something that as long as you're doing it properly you will always end up gaining the points uh, that are allotted to you remember I'm giving you a lot of tips uh, throughout these videos and throughout the class on ways to take advantage of a lot of the loopholes on the exams so that you get as many points as possible it's a numbers game you want to take advantage of this and this is one of them all right, here's the next question. Pause the video work itself, and we'll go over in a second. All right, so they want to know the weight of the object. Remember, weight is just a, a layman way of saying Fg, force due to gravity. So I'm going to use the equation Fg equals mg. My mass is 100 kilograms. The acceleration of gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. So that means my weight is going to be 980 newtons. All right. Here's the next question. Pause the video, work on myself, and we'll go over in a second. All right. So they want the acceleration. So once again, I'm doing F net equals MA. We know that the force is 100 newtons. We know the mass is 5 kilograms. So the acceleration, divide both sides by 5. And we end up getting 20 meters per second squared. Or, because this is in kilograms, and we're dividing these numbers, I can also get away with saying 20 newtons per kilogram. Next question, pause the video, work in self, and we'll go over in a second. All right, so now that we have more than one force, so I see a, a 50 newtons and I see a 28 newtons, I need to kind of pump the brakes. I can't just go straight into the plug and chug. Uh, I'm going to want to actually draw out a diagram. So let me just be a little careful. So we have 50 newtons going to the right. So this is 50 to the right. And we have 28 going to the left. 
So uh, I need to find the net force, which remember is me combining these, either adding or subtracting. Because they're in opposite direction, that means I'm going to subtract them. So um, my net force is going to be 50 minus 28, which is 22, I'll say. So once I have that number, I can now set it equal to in the F net equals MA equation. So 22 newtons, 20 kilograms, and acceleration, divide both sides by 20. And then uh, what we're going to end up getting is, I believe, 1.1. Let me just double check. Yeah, 1.1 meters per second squared. All right. Oh. All right. Here's the next question. Pause the video, work itself, and we'll go over in a second. All right. So I can actually answer this without doing any math. Even though they technically want me doing math, I don't need it. Uh, first off, they're looking for the force. The force is measured in newtons. So right off the bat, two is gone and three is gone. Always try to look out for ways to get rid of choices. And when you know for a fact that a choice is not going to be possible, cross it out so that you're no longer paying attention to it. Now I'm looking at these two numbers, 49.1 newtons up and five newtons going down. Now, again, I don't need to do any math here. The table is sitting underneath the block. The block is being pulled down by gravity. The table is supporting the block. It's keeping the block from moving down. And it's doing this by exerting a force upwards on this block. That's how it's supporting it. It's being pulled down by gravity, but the table is pushing it up with an equal amount of force so that it doesn't come down. The only one that has a force going upwards is this. Now you can also figure this out by using the FG equation. FG equals MG. There's no reason to forget it. It rhymes. Uh, and we do 5 times the 9.8 and you get 49.1. Alright. Here's the next question. Pause the video work itself and we'll go over in a second. Alright. So if you spent more than 20 seconds on this question then you are probably going about it the wrong way. Here is a very important thing. There is a very, very distinct difference between mass and weight. Those are two different things. It is true that when we go onto other planets, we do weigh differently. Uh, when we go onto the moon, we weigh lighter, which is one of the reasons why we jump a little bit higher. If we go to Jupiter, let's say, we would weigh a lot more than we do on Earth. In fact, even going elsewhere on Earth, going towards the North Pole versus the equator or to the top of a, uh, a mountain, uh, we would end up changing our weight. But there is one thing that never changes, our mass. Mass never changes changes. Remember the definition of mass is the amount of matter that an object has. So unless you're cutting off a limb, your mass does not change uh, depending on where you are. Therefore, if the man has a mass of 98 kilograms on Earth, he has a mass of 98 kilograms on the moon. If you happen to take this 98 and multiply it by the 1.62 uh, that they have here, what you found was his weight on the moon, but the mass never changes. This is one of those questions that they love asking. It comes up all the time, and it's a, a question that tricks people. In fact, uh, back in the day when I was uh, teaching AP physics, I had probably the smartest kid that I've ever met in my that in my entire time at teaching. Um, he was in the AP class, and he demolished the class. He made it look like a joke, which ended up backfiring for me later on. But uh, this kid was super smart and he took the regents and I was expecting him to get a hundred, but he ended up getting three questions wrong. This was the question that he got wrong. This exact question.
question. The other two he got wrong were also the trick questions about equilibrium and things like that. These are questions that when I ask it to you right now, you may not think that they're hard. But when it comes time for the test, too many of you will end up falling in this trap. It is one of those too easy to get right questions. So you want to make sure that you keep an eye out for that. Pay attention to what it says. Mass never changes. All right. Here's the next question. Pause the video work itself, and we'll go over in a second. All right. Now, this is actually a multiple choice question, which is a little bit um, tricky because of the fact that there's uh, kind of two steps. It's like a one and a half step type question, but there's multiple things that you have to do. So uh, the thing here is you have to remember that there's a link between acceleration and net force. I've gotten, I've done so many questions that in my mind, the moment I see the word acceleration, mass, and force, I already have them all linked up together. So you want to start doing that. You see an acceleration and mass, you need to immediately think of net force. Uh, if you see force and acceleration, again, think of net force. So here, uh, I know I tell you, you know, find the net force, but the idea is you would have actually had to figure this out yourself. You would have been going straight to choice B. Uh, but to find the net force, we do F net equals MA. We take the four kilograms, we times it by the 10. I'm gonna drop the units just cause it's getting tough writing on the mouse. So my net force is gonna be 40 newtons. Now. Even though they don't need a direction, I'm going to want to state the direction. The acceleration is going to the right. The net force will also go to the right. Net force always goes in the same direction as your acceleration. So if you're accelerating a direction, that means that's the direction where you have the bigger force. Now, part B says, what's the magnitude of the frictional force? Now, there is an equation for frictional force, but we don't know it yet which means we can't use it and we're not supposed to use it. If I look at this diagram, I know that the net force is 40 newtons to the right. This means that the difference between these two forces has to equal 40. In fact, I can write that right here. FF plus the 50 newtons has to equal 40. So the sum of all my forces has to equal 40. Now I know what you might be thinking, these are in opposite directions, why am I adding and not subtracting? I'll show you it doesn't even matter right now. In a case like this it doesn't matter. So solving for FF minus the 50 over and I get FF equals negative 10. So the 10 is my value, the negative just tells me it's in the opposite direction. All that matters was that the 50 newtons and the 40 had the same unit. Uh, and this ended up getting me the correct unit at the end. So my answer would be 10 newtons. And then I could stipulate to the left. This will make it so that my net force is 40, so that my acceleration is 10. And that's pretty much it. Um, there's one more law, but for the most part, you kind of want to get into the habit of Thinking of net forces, you're given multiple forces, think about whether you're going to add or subtract them. Uh, you're given an acceleration, immediately think of uh, net force and see, think of that as far as trying to figure out what other forces are. 11 is a very common question. It's a question that's going to come up all the time. And like I said, it's going to be common that you're going to go straight to choice B, not being asked choice A. So you want to get into the habit of being able to do this yourself. Now, the good thing is while this is common, plug in chugs are also just as common. So, you know, don't think that this is all the questions. These were all on the regions. Every single question I pulled up was coming from the regions. So if these were easy, Congratulations, noon second law should end up being easy. Uh, if you have any questions, once again, uh, let me know. Send me a message on Remind or through email. Join the extra help if you're confused about something, you want me to clarify anything. Make sure you're filling out the notes. Um, see you later and good luck.